everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Today we are going to be painting some birds and I'm going to be using this set of watercolour paints, which is from Paul Rubens. It's their artist watercolour set, which they kindly sent me a while ago and uh, I did review it at the time and can't say I've actually used it a great deal since then, but um, I thought to myself, well, it's about time I did. So I've got it out and here it is. And there are 36 colors in here. Each tube is five mils in capacity and they are highly pigmented, very good quality, professional quality paints with on them. They have all the information that you need, which is the pigment number. Um, so you know what it's made up of. And it has also light fastness and opacity ratings on the back there. So I think you can see that it says uh, pigment violet 19 and uh, it's set sort of opaque because it's got that white square. If it's uh, transparent, then it has a uh, just a drawn square rather than being filled in look uh, like this one. That's got a line across it. That means it's semi transparent. If it hasn't got a line across it, that means that it is completely transparent. I'm just looking for a colour that I think would be transparent. What about um, what about phthalo blue, for example? We've got that here. We've got Berlin blue, which I think is the equivalent. No, okay, no, I'm wrong there. The one with the line across that is transparent when it's got a half a tri half a square there, like that. So a triangle. That means it's semi. Okay, sorry, stand corrected on that. I think they vary depending on um, the brand, how they how they do it. But anyway, so you've got a mixture there, but they're all very good paints. So I have um, put them on my palette of preference because you can't use them from the tube. So I I like to work with, um, just make the paper, it's not gonna get dirty otherwise. I like to use a big, um, tray like this. This is a butcher's tray. It's about, oh, yay by yay. I don't know how big it is. It's quite big, um, sort of like this big. Um, too big to go on the camera because I've, I've moved my um, camera further down so it's closer to the desk um, because somebody said, why don't you move your camera closer to the desk? So I thought, I'll try that because, you know, why not? So, yeah, as you can see, this... Uh, tray has become rather yellow with age, which is something that happens to plastic. Look how that contrasts to this white ceramic um, mixing tray that I got from Meaden. This is really useful, actually. And what I've decided to do today, since I'm using this palette to hold the paints, I'm going to mix on here. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because, obviously, if you're mixing paints and you mix them on a yellow surface, you might get a different idea and it might not matter. You know, it doesn't necessarily matter if all of your paints have got a slightly yellow tinge to them. It doesn't matter. Um, they'll be fine once they go onto the paper, but still it could be a little bit confusing for you. So anyway, it's just an idea that if you're thinking, I know I don't give me all this rubbish about you can do it with a magic sponge. You can't. Once it gets to this point, this is not, not a case of taking off the stains of paint. That I can do, that I have done, but this, the magic marker will not get rid of the yellowing on these things when they go like this. And the other day I was looking around in my house and I thought to myself, you know what, I feel like an old lady because I've got all this yellow plastic in my house, so I'm going to throw it all away. And every time I spot a piece of yellow plastic, it's going to go in the bin because when I was young, I remember going and looking at other people's houses, you know, like my grandmother's house and things like that. And there would often be yellow plastic and it looks so sad. It's kind of, you know, a sign of imminent demise really. Anyway, enough of that. Let's move those over there a bit. And um, that's this is my paper. I'm going to move this up a bit. I don't care what people say anymore. I'm going to move it up a little bit because it's too low now. Okay, so I've moved it up a bit now. So you can see, you can see at least a quarter of the palette and the mixing space. And um, I'll have to turn it around when I go away from the blues and greens. Um, I'm going to use two round brushes here, a size 14 Craft Mo one from our set and a draw well number eight from Japan. That should be okay. I'm not sure if I'll use anything else at the moment, but we'll start with those. And all I'm going to do today is I'm going to 
um, paints and birds, and um, I'm going to do them in a fairly random way. I haven't got anything in mind really, except I want to do a page of birds, and I'm going to do them in as many different colors as I possibly can. Um, so we'll see how that goes. This is meant to be a relaxing thing. We need that, don't we? We really do always need that. So let's see, I've got turquoise green here, I think. Transparent turquoise or, yes, transparent turquoise. So let's start off with that. And there are more than one way of painting a bird. I prefer to keep it really loose and I like to let my birds kind of grow. Um, so let's add a slightly darker color there. And this is just a really nice, um, nice way of playing with color and um, and just playing with wet in wet actually. So we're just uh, dropping some nice greens in there and then we want a lighter color I think for the underneath. So what color shall I use for the underneath? Shall I go for a light turquoise? Maybe like that. Okay, and I'm going to put the branches in afterwards. The branches upon which these birds are going to be standing. So I'll just give them some feet and then it'll make more sense when we come back to it afterwards and, uh, and give them something to stand on. So there's bird number one. He doesn't have any features as yet. We'll let him dry. Okay, so let's go, I'm just at random, you know, just at random, I'm going to cobalt blue here. And I'm not trying to make a picture, I'm just going to paint birds. And I'm thinking that brush has seen better days. It's not got a point anymore, there's no point to this brush. Okay. So we're going to have to make this bird bigger because that was wrong. That brush is too small. Let's try this one. This is the kind of thing that happens, you know, I mean, it's not a big deal, but it happens. You pick up a brush, you think I'm gonna paint with that brush and you, next thing you know, it's not working, so there we are. It's raining again. Yep. Apparently it's been raining in California. Isn't there a song, it never rains in California or something like that? Well, it's not true anymore. <laughs> Let's give this one a little crest. Uh -uh. Put some blue there. And the nice thing about these birds is that when you've done them, you can doodle on them, right? Let's do this one. Let's do this one looking up like that. So my, my advice when you're doing birds is to, for what it's worth, um, start with the head or the feet, that's what I do, and um, sort of build the bird. As long as you remember that they have um, a sort of oval shaped body and a round shaped head. And really that's about all there is to it. And just, you know, adjust it till it looks like a bird, more or less. Let's do this one in a nice green. Um, let's put this one down here, start with the beak and paint the head. If you watch birds a lot, and I'm sure you do, you kind of get a feel for them after a while. I don't know. Does that look like a bird? Make them yours. Um, let's have, should we have one in a sort of orangey color? Brown. 
Maybe, oh, I'll tell you what, let's, since I've got brown all of a sudden on my brush, let's put in some, a twig, and then let's put some leaves on that twig so we get an idea for the sort of thing that we're thinking of doing. And, you know, do it your way, whatever your way. There's a song, isn't there? I did it my way. It's a song for every occasion, isn't there? I've discovered this with doing the shorts. You go to Epidemic Sound and you say, I, I need a piece of music for this little painting that I've just done. And it's as if they read your mind, they kind of just come up with something appropriate. It's really strange. I don't know, it's, it's artificial intelligence and a good day. I'm painting on a piece of Meden. Um, cold press, 120, 140 pound watercolour, 100% cotton. Good paper. You don't need to draw your birds, you can just paint them. You'd become a much better artist if you just do that. It will take practice. You can't expect to be able to paint any more than you could expect to play the piano in half a minute. You have to practice a lot. But eventually, it'll work, I think. Should we do an orange one? Or a yellow one? A yellow bird. Start with the beak, do the head. He wants a crest, it's obvious. Is he a parrot? Nah, head's a bit too small, no, it's better. And some legs. The legs always come from far further back than you might think. Put the legs right back near the tail. That's the best thing to do, really. Should put another one of these up here. Let's start with a yellow tummy. And then let's put some dark colour behind. There's different ways of doing it. Probably we need another one down here. Maybe I'll do that in green again. Start with this brush uh, that I swapped to because the other one I had had lost its point is a um, uh, Princeton um, Aqua Elite. brush a size uh, eight round and it's a nice brush, yes. If you add black to these colors, this, this paint's really quite good. And if you add black to any of the colors, you'll get a darker, clean dark, which is really, really useful because you don't have to go hunting for something else. One of the things I think that holds people back from painting freely is that they have to go hunting for paints, whereas, you know, oh, I need a darker version of that green or whatever. With these, you can just add black and Bob's your uncle. See? Isn't that effective? Well, I think that's enough on there. So now we want to find some brown. We'll make some brown. We can take some yellow and some red. Um, there we go. We'll get a nice dark brown there. That's green and red, gives you a lovely dark brown. See? And we'll just put these branches in. 
like this. Paint them under their feet. And this one here. And then before they dry, we want to go back with a bit more of a darker colour. So I'll add some black to that brown and uh, perhaps put in a few twigs, make it a bit more lumpy. Put a few twiggy bits in with the darker brown. Just make it up as you go along, you know. like God. Um, yeah. We'll put some leaves on in a second. This one we did earlier, so it's kind of dry. So we're just, just putting some shadow into that. And then we want some green. So we'll take this green that we've got here. Lovely, lovely dark green. Look at that. That's black and mixed with um, olive dark, I think. So we can just, when you hit up against the wet paint, it will run in a very beautiful way. And we'll just make these leaves all sorts of random shapes and sizes. Let's mix up a bit more of that with a bit more black. I really like that colour. You can add some yellow to it if you want to make it a little bit more uh, natural green rather than an artistic green. And when you get to this point, you're going to be starting to think, oh, what am I going to do after I've done this? Am I going to... Am I, am I going to embellish it? What am I going to do with these birds? Am I going to give them features with a brush? Or am I going to work on them with a pen? Because you could do lots of things. Um, looks to me as if they might be asking for a little bit of pen work. What do you think? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think I'll go for... This is my favourite, really. This is a Fudenosuke uh, Tombow brush pen, which means that it can go thick and thin. If you press harder, you get things thicker. Um, while that's still wet, I could scrape in some... If I can find a scrapey thing. Just a sec. Where's it gone? And um, could scrape in some lines for veins in the leaves if it's not dry, it's not too dry. They should go a little bit darker. Okay, can do that. And then we can start to, well, first of all, I think I'd better run the hairdryer over this and dry it off a bit. And then we'll see what happens next. Okay, now this is dry and I'm thinking to myself, okay, yes, I am gonna do some pen work on them. But before I do that, I want to do another layer of colour. So I'm going to come in with some darker shades of the colour of the bird underneath. So that was um, turquoise, cobalt turquoise. So for the, just to sort of um, emphasise the back part of the bird, we'll just do that and maybe a bit on the tail as well. And uh, then this one was cobalt blue, I think. So we've got a bit on the head. And then down here. A 
And then this one wants to be a bit on the greenish side, I think, on the head and the wing, like that. Maybe a bit on the tail. And here's another green one down here, so we'll do the same. This one wants to be dark blue. Oh, not that colour. Where did I get that idea from? Purple, mauve. Oh, yeah. And then we've got a green one down here. And a yellow one here. Right, so let's work the hair dryer on again. Okay, so let's put some eyes in these birds, shall we? And uh, perhaps a little bit of a marking for their beak. And generally speaking, the eye is kind of in line with the center part of the beak. So it's quite low down usually, if you want them to look remotely cute. So you can just put the center there and then the eye. And I'm gonna come back in a second with some white. And uh, so the last thing you want to do, you don't want to put the eye too high. Okay. Now, I know this pen's not going to work, so excuse me if I get aggressive with it. You have to hit, hit it. Whoops. Uh, but maybe not that hard. Typical. Okay, let's try that again. I just wanted a little bit of a highlight in the eye and maybe some white around it on some of them. Anyway, they're all going to get a highlight. Yeah, that's the eyes. Some of them are going to get um, some, some white, uh, what do you call it? Um, embellishments on their plumage and stuff like that. But first I'm going to I'm going to put some veins in and join these leaves to the branches. Sorry about the noise. If you can hear that, someone has got a chainsaw out. I don't know why. Not on our property. I'm just using a number five draw well here to do these center veins. And then, what are we going to do next? We could put some embellishments using the brush. So we could go into this one on top of the blue with some purple like that, and then maybe the tail could go like this. Make his legs a little bit darker. And then this one, the green one. This is where you can have fun and make your birds according to your own design. And you could have turquoise, little turquoise dots.
the legs a little bit darker at the top. There we are. And this one can do some similar things on the tail there, like that. You could do this with a brush pen if you wanted to, or you could do it with a pencil. A lot of people like to do watercolour with pencils. You could spend absolutely ages on this, you know. Really. This is where you don't have to worry at all about it being realistic. Just whatever comes to mind. Once you've gone over all of them with your third layer, you can then start to um, embellish them with some pen work if you want, or you can say, I've had enough of that for one day and stop, or whatever you want to do. All right, I don't really very much like the shape of this one's head. He went a bit wonky. That was when I had the not particularly good brush, and so I didn't get the points. It's quite important to get a good point on their beak. Gets you off on the right foot. I think he's going to have to have some white on him to make him work. So we just come down there with a bit more blue, and he looks fine already. Soften that line a little bit, maybe. Okay. All right, hair dryer time. So, okay, so let's uh, let's use the white pen. I've got a this is a Posca pen, white. Seems to work okay. Quite a, it's quite a broad um, nib. And let's give him some nice free sort of squiggles. And as I said, he needed his beak adjusting a little bit. So we'll just do that, keep that simple. This one I think wants something also a bit like that. Okay, um, let's put some dots on his chest. Let's 
Posca pen's working quite well. It's probably the best one. It's not very fine, but I suppose you have to sacrifice something. The finest ones are only really very good on smooth paper. This one's cute, isn't he? I like his face. I'm not going to do anything to his face. But we'll do something on here. Okay, these need some white in them. This one, I think he wants some white on his chest. Maybe some dots like that, perhaps. And, okay, now this one, let's do the same here. I quite like this effect. And he's got a crest. Let's give him some eye makeup. There we are then, that's that. Go into the leaves a little bit with some white. And into the branches, it gives them a bit more freedom if we just kind of scribble a bit. I noticed I came across a, an art channel the other day, I don't remember her name actually, but it's something like Scribble With Me. And her, her art is just literally taking a pen or a pencil or whatever, and just uh, scribbling like a child. It's very good, it's very therapeutic, I'm sure. Okay, so that's up to there we are, and I think probably we need a little bit of, well, no, I don't think we're going to do a spatter. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my palette here and I'm going to mix up some loose light green. And I'm just going to come into the painting in places in the background. I'll just go around some of these birds fill in the spaces. Okay, because you need a bit of a background, otherwise it's just like you cut them out of paper and stuck them on a piece of cardboard or something, you know, what do they call that? Collage. You know, collage is French for sticking. Gluing. It's a French word like bouquet. It's watching, we're watching lots of um, black and white films at the moment from the 40s and the 50s before things all went stupid in the 60s and um, we're watching one with Joan Crawford in it at the moment called Harriet something or other. I don't know what's going to happen, we've only just got to the beginning of it but the films back then they were so interesting and they're so revealing about the personality of America. My goodness me. Yes, I don't know what that's got to do with collage, but you know, if you were in my head you'd probably know. So I'm just filling in the gaps around these birds with some very loose washes, broken washes. This is a, yeah, this is a broken wash. I don't know I've ever heard anyone talk about that on um, YouTube yet. People talk about graduated washes and I talk about um, variegated washes and people talk about um, the thing that doesn't seem to have a name, which is when you make something the same colour all over, you know, a, just a wash. But there is something called a broken wash and that's what this is. And you can see what that is, can't you? Then you could, at this point then, you could then pick up a few... Uh, drops of green, darker green, and you could spatter that in. And this is where you have to say to yourself, there's nothing, I'm not going to spoil anything because there's nothing to spoil. This was just a way of spending the afternoon. In my case, it's going to be uh, memorialised forever on video, but um, still, I'm not going to get upset about that if it doesn't look good at the end but it will be fine. 
it will be good enough. I'm quite keen on this um, black mixed with green business. I think you should practice that because you'll find it's fun and you'll get all these lovely, amazing shades of dark green. I think green is my favourite colour. I'm just going back into all the leaves now and giving them a little hint of green. I always find it looks like nothing on earth when they're wet, but when it's dry, you look back and you think, how did I do that? I don't know. I don't know how I did that. How did I do that? Right, so we're going to let that dry, and then if it needs anything else, like I've immediately seen here, this poor little birdie doesn't have his beak. His beak is not openable. There we go, that's better. How about all the others? All the others can open their beaks one way or another. So that's fine. So I'm going to call that a day. And here we are. How many birdies? Three, six, seven, eight. And uh, yes, cheap, cheap. Have fun. See you again soon. Oh, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Don't forget, please, to visit our website at dianeanton.com and uh, spend a lot of money because we don't get paid to do any of this. I don't have a salary. No one ever gives me any money. So I'll let you go and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now, everyone. Bye bye.